Hey everyone, we're really excited to be here today. We're going to talk about wireless GIS or more specifically wireless coverage modernization. We'll give an overview on what wireless GIS is, how the data is used to make decisions, and why transformation or modernization is required to meet current and future business needs. First, to introduce ourselves, Peter and myself work at TELUS in the RAN, that's Radio Access Network, Planning and GIS team in wireless engineering. I mainly focus on the GIS part of the team's activities and I prime the wireless GIS roadmap. I'm located in Toronto and Peter is in Montreal. Hi everyone, I'm Peter Duong, Design Specialist at TELUS. Uh, I work closely with Lydia in the GIS side and I'm the technical lead on cloud technology, location intelligence and data analytics. Uh, before we get started, I would like to share with you a brief intro of TELUS. TELUS is a world leading communication and information technology company with over 15.2 million customer connections spanning wireless data, IP, voice, television, entertainment, video and security, healthcare, and agriculture. Lydia and I are part of the wireless DevOps team where we support our 4G LTE and now 5G network reaching 99% of Canadians. You can find out a little more uh, on our website at telus.com or on the about page listed on the slide. So what's the role of the wireless GIS team at TELUS? Our mission is to provide expertise for applications requiring coverage, wireless coverage and other wireless spatial data. We do spatial analysis and we provide support for internal mapping tools, analytics or map tools on telus.com. Basically anything that involves wireless coverage is coming from our team. Wireless coverage is required to support multiple teams and processes throughout TELUS. For the LTE and HSPA networks alone, over 500 files at 30 meter resolution are processed for downstream activities, including visualization, service qualification, customer support, and analytics. Visualization or coverage maps can be found on TELUS.com for customers to see where we have coverage. We also have internal mapping applications that show more detailed coverage at specific DBM or signal strength thresholds. These maps are used across multiple teams as reference against wireless and wireline network infrastructure and at specific addresses, etc. Frontline teams can use the internal map portal to help clients or to sell a service. Service qualification can be more complicated than a simple lookup though against an all band coverage um, that you might do with a generic coverage map on telus.com. For more complex qualifications, you can take a location and check against multiple files. So multiple bands and even best servers, uh, which are the polygons that a tower serves to determine if a particular product is available. This type of service qualification can be used for fixed wireless access or IoT applications and other use cases. All right, on the customer support side, coverage maps are shared with our frontline and network support agents to help troubleshoot network incidents. For example, best server coverage maps are used to identify the site involved in an issue that we are investigating. Another good example is to help our technicians identify the strongest signal at a location to properly install and calibrate user equipment for wireless high-speed internet service. Now on the analytics side, population covered, road covered and area covered are some of the analysis that are frequently done with the coverage files. We can track our growth um, of the network by technology frequency ban, or even by market. As well, can be used in data science applications. In our case, we use coverage in our machine learning model to help prioritize network improvement. Another great example of uh, analytics involving wireless coverage as one of the inputs includes recent activities during the coronavirus pandemic. The TELUS engineering teams leverage various location intelligence assets 
to assess wireless network coverage and capacity needs at healthcare centers across Canada. We're talking about uh, major hospitals, screening centers, and vaccination centers. With these insights, TELUS quickly deployed permanent or temporary cellular towers and or indoor solutions at these locations to ensure reliable wireless communication for public health officials, public safety, and of course, all of our customers. So uh, those are the examples of uh, how the coverage is used in applications. Now let's talk a little bit about the inputs um, in this process. The slide is indicating that there are over 500 files as input. Why so many? Additionally, this isn't including our 5G coverage yet. So let's take a look at those two things as they are drivers for our modernization. In, in order to understand why there are so many input files, we'll do a quick overview on what wireless coverage is by presenting some key details. There are two main types of coverage that our team works with, signal strength and best server files or polygons for sites area. The files are created by the RF design software. The designers or wireless engineers input all of the design specifics into the tool and the GIS team schedules the coverage creation on a monthly basis in order to produce map views such as the one shown on the right. The signal strength files are output predominantly as 30 meter bins, or we call them raster files. Each 30 meter bin has a value that is predicted signal strength a user's equipment receives at that location. So for example, uh, on 4G LTE, they are called RSRP, reference signal receive power. And if you look at the slide on, um, on the bottom right hand side, you can see snapshots of our coverage that was tiled using BigQuery Tiler in our proof of concept with the Carto platform. Best servers or polygons for a site's coverage area are a representation of the area that a particular sector of a site serves. Aside from the first or the best, uh, signal strength files and the best servers, you can also generate the second best, third best, and so on. These files are used for analysis, qualifications, among other things, and can be generated at specific DBM thresholds. One of the routine analyses that the team generates is population per best server, as Peter mentioned earlier. Best server vector files have a lot of detail which can make them challenging to work with. So for each network, whether it's LTE, HSPA, or 5G, there are multiple bands that can be enabled. So for example, within an LTE network, GIS outputs include a composite file, meaning it includes all bands combined, and also single outputs by band, for example, 1900, 2100. These are different ranges of frequency bands broadcasted by our cellular sites. Additionally, for accuracy, uh, the RF design software uses NAD83 UTM zones, meaning that there are multiple markets across Canada. So for simplicity's sake, let's say we have 10 UTM zones or markets, two networks, LTE and HSPA, 10 bands and two types of files. That adds up quickly to 400 uh, files, but actually we do have more. So it's over 500 files nationally in our data sets for LTE and HSPA. TELUS launched our 5G coverage in 2020. The anticipated increase in our coverage data as the network grows is to a size of over 1,000 files. Resolutions will increase for 5G predictions as well particularly in urban areas. So we'll end up with more markets and outputs and a larger data set. Additionally, coverage requirements for 5G will include 3D elements and mapping as the 5G technology is more sensitive than LTE. The increase in data volume combined with increased demand for faster updates and analysis 
such as we saw during COVID when a pivot from the existing strategy was urgently required, it was clear that a significant transformation of the GIS operations was necessary. We're now working with Carto to modernize our processes with their cloud-based platform. So key advantages of Carto platform is this scalable data pipeline for ingestion into BigQuery. Automation will help our team handle repetitive and manual tasks. We do already have in place automation uh, and scheduling, but with Carto platform in the cloud, we believe we can improve our current processes. Uh, we will be able to make data-driven decisions faster than we can currently. We're looking uh, towards building integration with Carto into our existing softwares and tool through API and BigQuery Tyler. So the choice to modernize with a cloud-based solution uh, also aligns with TELUS cloudification strategy. Therefore, we are embracing change and continuous transformation in our GIS, uh, wireless GIS, and we're excited to be on the journey with Carto. This concludes our presentation. Uh, we'd like to thank all the sponsors and the organizers of this event, and uh, thank you all the participants for tuning in today. Thank you. All right, thank you, Lydia and Peter. That was an awesome talk. Um, we do have a couple questions for you in the chat here. So Bert Wozink asks, what kind of format do these files have? Sure, that was an awesome. Um, yeah, so the format for the files, um, so there's different types of formats that they can, can come in. I mean, you can have um, a, a GRG file, uh, GRCs, they could be uh, MRR files, um, tab files, like uh, vector files. So basically different raster and vector formats are the, are the files that we work with for propagation. Awesome. Someone else just asked about your tech stack. So a lot of interest there. And then I know we talked about um, coverage data, but outside of that data set, what other data sets are you using for your analyses? Yeah, so due to the nature of our work in planning, uh, we mostly use uh, data sets um, that are used internally, uh, like market boundaries and uh, some other network key performance metrics. Then we have public data sets, so uh, point of interest from open source systems, uh, data from the government, uh, whether it's a uh, federal or provincial level. Uh, we're looking at the uh, census division, which represents communities across Canada, uh, the population and also the households within these areas. And finally, um, anything that's offered by third party, maybe social media, crowdsource, um, we're always on the lookout for any new interesting data sets out there. Awesome. Well, we are already up on time, but thank you, Lydia and Peter, for sharing so much about your analyses, the data you're using.